Child on bicycle struck and killed by Sheboygan garbage truck. Sheboygan poverty rate remains among the lowest in the nation. Double murder trial begins this week for Oosberg Man. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, October 10th, 2019. A nine-year-old child is dead after being struck by a city garbage truck in Sheboygan, Wisconsin on Wednesday morning. Police say the unidentified child was on a bicycle at the time of the incident near 14th and Center. According to police, the child was believed to have been on his way to school at the time of the accident, and Sheboygan police also say the driver of the truck is 35-year-old man who's been with the city for about two years. He was also with another worker, a 55-year-old man who has been with the city for about 21 years and was collecting garbage at the rear of the vehicle at the time. The state patrol is now investigating and drivers are being asked to avoid the area of 14th and Center as the investigation continues. Sergio Oka, a man from Oostburg charged with killing two men back in 2017, goes on, jury, or goes on trial this week. Jury selection began Monday in Sheboygan County Court, and the trial could last up to three weeks for Oka, who is facing charges of two counts of first-degree intentional homicide for the shooting deaths of Louis Garcia and Fernando Lopez. In July of 2017, Oka allegedly shot both men after an argument over money, and the two victims were found inside the home in Oostburg. Oka turned himself to, into Sheboygan police later and told the police at the time he didn't mean to do what he did. Oka could spend the rest of his life in prison if he is found guilty. A litter of five kittens have been rescued in Merrill. WAOW-TV is reporting that five kittens were found in a garbage can on Tuesday. A man found them in the garbage can at the end of his driveway and brought them to the Lincoln County Humane Society after he could not find the mother cat. The kittens were put into a cage with a surrogate mother by shelter volunteers at the Humane Society. And so far, the mother cat has not fed the new kittens. For now, shelter volunteers are feeding the kittens every three to four hours. The kittens are doing well, but will need foster care. Shel Shelter manager Liz Friendsfield tells WAOW, we hope to find someone who can provide that care for them. Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources officials are cautioning hunters against phony licensing scams. The agency says they have been made aware of at least two websites that claim to offer licenses, but after users pay the fee and turn over personal data, they are only given information on how to apply for a license with the DNR. Officials say authentic licenses should be purchased at any DNR authorized retailer, service centers, or Go Wild website. Anyone that thinks they ha may have been taken in on one of these scams is asked to call the state's Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection at 1-800-422-7128. Analysis of U.S. Census data by 24-7 Wall Street shows Sheboygan with the second lowest poverty rate in the nation last year at 6.6% Rochester. Minnesota ranked lowest in the nation, placing Sheboygan from year earlier ratings. Sheboygan poverty rate was almost half the na national rate. Unemployment was 2.5 and SNAP recipients numbered 7.7% of our population which earns a median income of 
896. Two other Wisconsin cities also made the list of 10 least impoverished cities in the nation, Appleton and Wausau, at numbers four and five, respectively. And finally, it was a busy floor session on Tuesday in the state Senate with dozens of appointments and bills and on the agenda. Senators started the session by approving all the Governor Tony Evers' cabinet picks, and those appointments have been held up for several sessions before making it to the floor. One pair of bills will change how the state handles sexual assault testing kits, and one bill lays out distinct procedures for what happens once a test is performed, something that the state senator, Robert Cowell, says was oddly not in place. We have no statutory procedures currently for sexual assault kit processing, and we need to have that. We need to have a clear chain of evidence to prevent the kinds of problems that have occurred in the past. The other bill requires police to investig and investigators to keep victims appraised on when their kits are being tested. State Senator Patty Shant Shantner says that it is vital after years of neglect when it came to DNA testing at the crime lab. It empowers victims and survivors, and we need to really support our victims, and this helps them track through the justice process, so I hope everyone supports it. Senators also approved the bill that would make the state's industrial hemp program permanent and afford some protections to farmers who grow it. The bill formalizes policies from the state agriculture department on how to handle growers of hemp and would protect farmers who unknowingly grow hemp that contain too much THC. Senator Lena Taylor of the Milwaukee voted for the measure. This is an important industry that we want to be a part of, but without this bill, the federal government would be in control. Those of you who feel strongly about this and about states' rights, today is the day you should be voting for this if you support states' rights because otherwise you're giving the federal government control over your farmers. The bill also modifies Wisconsin hemp laws to match language found in the new USDA Farm Bill, and the families of officers and EMTs killed while on duty will not lose their health insurance coverage under another bill. State Senator Van Wangard says that some, it's something that the state should have had in place a while ago. I'm sure that the law enforcement officers throughout the state and the EMTs will really appreciate the thoughtfulness in caring for their living spouses. State Senator Dave Hansen says the bill will match a measure that is already in place for the surviving families of firefighters who died while on duty. We were able to do this for fire personnel several years ago, and I'm proud of being the co-author of this, but this today is about doing the right thing together. The state will pay for that insurance through the police and fire protection fee that residents pay on their phone and wireless bills. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.